So my name is Miss Close and I am really excited because I am going to be teaching 10 literacy sessions. Now, I work in a school called Apton Infant School and I work with year one and year two children. When I'm not busy at work, I love going for swims and I also love going down the beach. I also really like reading stories. And in our session today, we are going to be reading a brand new story together. Now, what I'm going to do is hopefully I'm going to start to share my screen so you can see what's in our session today. So cross those fingers. This is Miss Close's first time of seeing if I can share my screen. Are they crossed? Let's see if we can give it a go. Now, in our session today, we are going to see if we can retrieve information and make inferences. Now, we're going to warm up our brains a little bit before we do that. And then I'm going to be reading you that story. We're going to be looking at a text called The Lemon Tree. Then we will have a go at answering retrieval and inference questions. Now, retrieval questions means that we need to find the answer on the pages that we have read. So we need to find the information, retrieve it to answer those questions. Inference questions are a little bit trickier because we need to use some evidence in the text and we need to reason why we think our answer is correct. But we'll have a bit of a go at that together. And then we'll finish off our session today by sequencing some of the events that we've heard in our story. So we'll have a go at remembering what came at the start, what came in the middle, and what came at the end. But before that, let's make sure we're ready for our session today, because you are going to need a pencil, you're going to need a notebook or some paper, and maybe some scrap paper for our warm-up game. And of course, you're gonna need those brains. So make sure they're switched on and let's have a go at warming them up first with our warm up game. So our warm up game this morning is all about common exception words. And you can see that I have got a house there and the word told is in the middle of my house. And on the outside of the house, there are lots of common exception words. I've got the word grass, hold, cold, could, old, parents, past, and gold. And your challenge is to see which words on the outside belong in the word family's house. So we are looking for some words that follow the same spelling rule as the word told. So on your scrap piece of paper, I want you to draw a big square for the building part of our house and a nice pointy triangle for the roof. So it looks a little bit like that. And we're gonna write our word told in our house. And you are going to see if you can write any more words that are on the outside of the house and write them inside the house if they follow that same spelling rule. So you're gonna have a go at pausing the video and see if you can write any more words that belong inside the word family's house for told. Okay, have a go at pausing the video and seeing how many you can find. Great job everybody. Let's have a little look at the ones that you added into your house. Now, if I change my slide, I think there are five words that belong inside this family's house. We already had our word told, and you can now see that gold, old, cold, and hold all belong in that house as well. They all have that O-L-D ending, don't they? So really good job if you got all five, and I hope that's warmed up your brains ready for our session. Give yourselves a bit of a pat on the back. And now it's your turn to put on your brilliant listening ears because we are about to listen to our story. Before we do that, we're going to have a look at some new words. So we're going to have a look at some vocab because we might have some words in this story that you haven't heard before. We're going to start with the word go-go. Now this story is based in South Africa and South Africans call their grandmothers go-go. 
We might call our grandparents granny or grandma, nanny or nan, but in this story, go-go means grandmother. Now in the next pictures, you can see that there are three ladies. And in each picture, these ladies are called mama. And mama is a loved female. So we might call somebody an auntie that might not be in our family, but is really close to us, a really good friend or really somebody special in our community. So we're going to see three ladies all with the name Mama. And if you look at our final picture, oh, it's a bit of a sad one because we've got a poor boy here who's hurt his knee and he lets out a big wail. Now, this whale is not the whale that swims in the deep blue sea. This is a whale where you cry out in pain. So it's a high pitched cry because this little boy has hurt himself. So let's just recap those words one more time. Gogo is South African for grandmother. Mama is a loved female. And whale is a high pitched cry of pain. So get yourselves comfy because we're going to now look at the story of the lemon tree and it's written by Catherine Graham and Wendy Patterson. Children come, I want to make pancakes, Gogo calls. We are outside dancing in the rain, jumping in puddles and squishing the mud between our toes. The rains have finally come, the rains that bring to an end of months of dryness dust and heat. The rains that are beginning of harvest time, plenty time, joyful time. Come inside children, you're getting wet and dirty. Gogo is not cross, we know we must listen to her this time. This is the perfect weather for making pancakes, she smiles. Gogo hums a little tune to herself whilst raindrops drum on the tin roof. In the kitchen, Gogo is huddled over the stove, turning knobs and heating oil. She opens drawers and cupboards, searching for something. There is a big bowl on the counter, but it is empty. No flour, she cries. No flour? We can't make pancakes without flour. Who will ask Mama Abisway for some flour? I will go, Gogo. I don't mind walking to Mama Abisway's house, I say. Wait, says Gogo, tugging on my skirt. Take some of the lemons with you. They are ripening nicely now. I pick some lemons from the tree in our front garden and carry them in my apron. The rain is no longer heavy, just a fine mist. Mama Abisway, I call. I have some lemons for you from our go-go. Mama Abisway smiles, her eyes disappearing amongst her wrinkles. Thank you, she says happily. Would your go-go like anything in return? Yes, please, Mama. A cup of flour for pancakes. Only one cup? Take two. I'll put them in a bag. I fold the bag of flour in my apron. Gogo is pleased when she sees me. Good girl, she pats me on my shoulder. Now, where were we? A cup of flour, two eggs. Landy, do we have any eggs? I look in the small cupboard under the sink, but there are no more eggs. Gogo sighs. Take Sipo with you and ask Mama Bungie for two eggs. Take some lemons with you. Sipo climbs the tree and throws the lemons down to me. Again, I carry them in my apron as we run to Mama Bongi's house. Skipping past the goats and splashing in the puddles. Mama Bongi, we are here to give you some lemons. Her cheeks fatten in plump balls and she smiles. Thank you. Does your go-go need anything, I wonder? Yes, please, answers Sipo peeking out from behind me. We need two eggs, Mama. She places a speckled egg in each of my brother's hands. Be careful not to drop them, she warns. We walk home slowly. Sipo doesn't want to crack the eggs. The sun is starting to peep out from behind the clouds. 
But no sooner are we home than Gogo sends us on another errand. We need milk too, Gogo clucks, shaking her head. Ask Mama Footy if she has some. And don't forget to give her lemons, we giggle. This time, Sipo has to climb very high to reach the branches that hold the golden lemons. He scratches his leg and starts to wail. Don't cry, Sipo. Soon we will be eating delicious pancakes, I remind him. Let's get the milk. Before Sipo has a chance to wipe his nose, we are off, scampering down the road to where Mama Footy lives. Mama Footy, I call, we have some lemons for you. A chicken in the front yard stops pecking to peer at me. Mama Footy sways from side to side as she walks to the gate, her hands on her hips. Oh, I love lemons, she laughs. Does your go-go need anything from me? Yes, Mama, said Sipo. Could you spare her some of your milk, please? I hold the plastic container carefully in my hands as we walk home quickly, trying not to spill the precious milk. You clever children, Gogo flashes a toothless smile. Now we have everything we need. Who wants to beat the pancake mixture first? Half an hour later, we crowd round the table to give thanks. As we tuck in, Gogo remembers something Lemons, she cries. We need a few drops of lovely fresh lemon to go on our pancakes. Our fingers are sticky with sugar and cinnamon and our stomachs are slowly warming with pancakes. Sipo and I do not want to get up again. Gogo steps outside and stares at the tree. There isn't a single ripe lemon left on the tree, she chuckles. And we laugh too. We know we wouldn't be eating pancakes today if it wasn't for the lemon tree. And that's the end of our story. You can see on that final page there, they're eating their delicious pancakes in Gogo's house. Now, what we're gonna have a go at doing is we are going to see if we can retrieve some information to answer some questions and we're going to see if we can use our inference skills. So we're going to have a go at using our paper now to see if we can write down the answers to some questions. Let's have a look at question number one. So my first question is, who is telling the story? So I have put a page back on the screen where we can try and retrieve, we can try and grab the answer to see who is telling the story. But what I would like you to do on your piece of paper is I would like you to write a question number one. So you're just going to do a nice number one and we are going to then see if we can write the answer in a full sentence. So. Let's be detectives, are you ready? Who is telling the story? Now, if we have a little look back at this part of the page, we can see lots of me and my and I. So we know that someone's telling the story. Gogo is pleased when she sees me. But who's me? Good girl, she pats my shoulder. Whose shoulder is it? Now, where were we? A cup of flour, two eggs, Lundy. Now, can you see Lundy? Lungi, sorry. It's got a capital letter and that must be a name. It's in the middle of a sentence. So I think here we found our character who is telling the story. It's Lungi. So let's just have a look. A cup of flour, two eggs, Lungi. Do we have any eggs? I look in the small cupboard. So Lungi is the person that is telling the story. Now, we don't just want to write answer number one, Lungi. We want to make sure that we're answering it in a full sentence. So let's see if we can put our answer into a sentence. The question is, who is telling the story? We could write, Lungi is telling the story of 
the lemon tree. That's the title of our book. So I'm going to model writing the first answer in a full sentence. Let me have a go. So Lungi. Lungi is telling the story. Now Lungi is a name, so we need to make sure we've got a capital letter. So I'm going to do Lungi. And don't worry if you don't know how to spell her name. Remember that you've got it right on your screen so you can retrieve that name. Lungi is telling the story of the lemon tree. So I'm going to do my finger space. Is telling. Oh, there's a suffix on the end of tell there. Tell in. Lungi is telling the story. And I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to have a go at telling you what the story was called. Lungi is telling the story of the lemon tree. That's the title of our story. The lemon tree. Now, if I'm happy with my sentence, remember it always needs to finish with a piece of punctuation and I'm going to do my full stop at the end. Lungi is telling the story of the lemon tree. So, we've practiced one together. We're now going to have a look at question number two. And you're going to have a go at creating a sentence all by yourself to answer this question. Let's have a look at our next question. Ooh, now it's another retrieval question, which means we can grab the answer straight from the pages. What ingredient does Mama Bongi provide? Provide means give. What does um, she give to the children? So I want you to use your detective eyes now. Have a little read back and see if you can find what does Mama Bongi give Sipo and Lungi? Hmm, let's have a little look. Can you spot it? Oh look, right down the bottom here. She asks, does your go-go need anything, I wonder? Yes, please, answers Sipo, peeking out from behind me. We need two eggs. Well done. If you saw that we needed the word egg to answer our question, you've done a great job. Now remember, I don't want to just see the word egg written by question number two. I want to see if you can put it into a sentence. Now you can pause the video here and have a little go. Great job guys. Now I would have said something like Mama Bongi gives the children eggs. So instead of just writing the word eggs here, I would have said Mama Bongi gives the children eggs. It answers the question, what ingredients does Mama Bongi provide? Well done guys. Now, you're going to go on to question three, and this time it's going to be a little bit trickier because we can't just grab the answer. We've got to look for clues to see if we can answer this inference question. Let's have a little look together. It says, how do Lundi and Sipo feel in the rain? So how do they feel? Now, when I'm in the rain, I feel cold, I feel miserable, or oh, I might be shivering and wishing the sun was out. I don't think the children feel that way. So your challenge now is to read back through this page. How do the children feel in the rain? Now, it's not something we can just grab the answer to. We're looking for clues. Oh, look, a clue here. We are dancing in the rain. Ah, when you're dancing, you must be feeling quite happy and having lots of fun. And then if we look down here, the rain has finally come. The rains that bring to an end the months of dryness, dust and heat. The rains that are the beginning of harvest time, plenty time, joyful time. They're almost feeling joyful, feeling happy that it's raining. So here's your next challenge. Pause the video again and see if you can write a sentence that explains how Lundy and Sipo are feeling in the rain. Off you go. 
brilliant job. I was thinking of writing something like, like Lungi and Sipo feel happy and joyful when it's raining because I think when you're dancing, you're feeling happy. And I've stolen the word joyful from the text as well. So if you got an answer about them feeling happy or having fun, give yourselves a pat on the back because that was a tricky one. Last question, are you ready? We're gonna have a look at this question that says, how does Mama Abiswe feel when Lungi gives her lemons? Now, is she angry? Is she surprised? Is she grumpy? Is she happy? So how does she feel? Now we've got to look for clues, haven't we? Let's see if we can spy some clues before you write down an answer. Mama Abiswe, I call. I have some lemons for you from our go-go. Mama Abiswe, oh, smiles. How is someone gonna be feeling when they smile? Her eyes disappearing amongst her wrinkles. So she's smiling so much, her eyes are almost closed. Thank you, she says. Oh, another key word, happily. Oh, there's some evidence there, there's some reasoning that we could give. So here comes your last question. Don't forget to write it in a full sentence. How does Mama Abiswe feel when Lungi gives her lemons? Are you ready? Pause the video, off you go. Brilliant sentences, well done. I think I would have said something like, Mama Abiswe feels happy and grateful for the lemons because she says thank you which means that someone's grateful someone's pleased for something and I stole the word happily and I turned it into happy there guys you've done a brilliant job today well done you've answered two retrieval questions and you've had a go at using some clues some evidence in the text to answer some inference questions so here's our last little game before we say goodbye for session one I have got a picture of some flour, I've got a picture of the milk jug, and I've got a picture of the egg. I've also drawn it on my post-its here on my scrap piece of paper. What I want you to have a go at doing, do you remember what order the children picked up all the ingredients? What did Gogo want first? What did she want second? And what did she want last? So can we put the flour, can we put the milk and the eggs into the right order? Now, just like I've done, on a scrap piece of paper, you can have a go at drawing all of the pictures in the right order. See if you can have a go. Well done, everybody. Are we ready to see if we got the right order? So. We should have had the flour first. She realizes that the cupboards are empty and she's got no flour. So the flour came first. Then they didn't have any eggs. That's when the children went off to ask for eggs. And the final thing they needed was the milk. So if you drew those pictures in that order, you are superstars. Very well done. Now I'm going to close down our session today because it's time to say goodbye. You have done some brilliant, brilliant work today and you should feel really, really proud of yourself. You've done some super listening and you've had a go at answering some questions in full sentences. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you for session two. So I will see you very soon and well done for working brilliantly today.